So in this video, I am going to demonstrate the colour changes involved with titrations and how that is dependent on which solution we start with in our conical flask and which we start with in our burette. You'll see that the chemicals I'm using here are hydrochloric acid as my acid and sodium hydroxide as my base or my alkali. The two indicators I'm going to demonstrate are phenolphthalein, which you perhaps met at GCSE, and methyl orange, which you maybe haven't met before. And you'll see here, I have measured out 25 mils of um, my acid and my base into a conical flask, and I've got two sets of these to demonstrate the two indicators. So what I'll start off by doing is perhaps my acid in the conical flask, and to show the colour change, I will then add the base to that. I will add sodium hydroxide from my burette. So you can see here, I've got my burette set up. Um, on the left hand side, I have it filled with hydrochloric acid. And on the right hand side, I have it filled with the sodium hydroxide, the base. Um, and so for each of the colour change uh, demonstrations, I will be adding the opposite solution to the conical flask. So I'm going to start by having sodium hydroxide in my conical flask and so I've rotated the burette clamp so that the burette containing acid is over the conical flask. So I'm adding acid, hydrochloric acid to my base, sodium hydroxide. And I'm going to start with the indicator of phenolphthalein. So I'm going to start by adding just a few drops into my conical flask. Indicator is always added to the conical flask. So your starting colour is essentially what colour is that indicator in the solution that is in the conical flask. So think about it, we have sodium hydroxide, which is a base or an alkali, in our conical flask. Phenolphthalein is pink in alkali, and so therefore my starting colour is pink. So let's see what happens when we add our acid. So I will um, turn the tap so that the acid is now adding to the base. Now I'm not doing this as an accurate titration. I don't want to necessarily measure the volume that it requires to uh, neutralise my base. But you can see um, all we're demonstrating here is the colour change. And you can see the colour change that has happened here is that the pink colour has disappeared and it has turned colourless. So the colour change when we start with base in our conical flask and add acid to it with the use of phenolphthalein indicator, the colour change is pink to colourless. But what about if we do it the other way round? If I was to swap this for um, acid in my conical flask, if I added a few drops of phenolphthalein indicator to my conical flask this time, you can see that there's no colour change. My solution remains colourless. So this time what I want to do is I want to add base to it. So I'm going to rotate my burette clamp so that the base is over the conical flask. So I'm now adding sodium hydroxide to the hydrochloric acid and let's see what the colour change is. Now if you look closely you can probably see a bit of colour there but when I swirl it, that, that colour disappears. And I've just got a white tile at the bottom here and at the back of the retort stand, just so that you can see that colour change really well. If I keep adding my base, again, I'm not too worried about being accurate here. If I keep adding it until there's a constant colour, you can see that it has turned pink, okay? And that's because phenolphthalein is pink in alkali. So we can see this time where we start with acid in the conical flask using phenolphthalein as my indicator and adding base from the burette. The colour change is colourless to pink. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same process again, but I'm going to use a different indicator this time. I'm going to use the indicator of methyl orange, which you may not have met before. And you can see that the indicator to start with is um, a lovely orange colour, um, hence the name. Um, and again, I'm going to start with base in the conical flask, as it is in your notes. I'm going to put it under the burette here, and this is my burette containing hydrochloric acid. So if I add a few drops of the indicator to the conical flask, remember the indicator um, is always added to the conical flask. If I add a few drops here, it's maybe not as strong a colour as with phenolphthalein, 
um, but hopefully you can see there and um, that we get a nice yellow color when methyl orange is added um, to a base so you can see the color in the conical flask the starting color as such um, is yellow okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to add my acid again not too concerned um, about the volumes here and about it being precise you can see it's starting to change color there but um, on swirling it's gone back to yellow and um, when it's all sufficiently mixed okay and now you can see the color change um, has finished and what we end up with there um, is kind of a pinky color there but it's referred to as red it's probably because we don't have a, too strong a concentration of our indicator if i add a couple of extra drops we'll see if we can see that color any more intensely um, but the color change we refer to with methyl orange is yellow to red when we're going from a base in the conical flask and adding an acid from our burette. Let's try it now the other way around, um, this time starting with our acid in the conical flask. And I'll move this burette round before I do that. Um, so I'm moving it round now so that the base is being added to the conical flask from the burette. Okay, so again, I've got acid in my conical flask. Let's add a few drops of the indicator. And you can have a think about what color you might expect. And so as you may be expected from the opposite way round to the last demonstration, our starting color this time is red. Okay, so our starting color this time is red in the conical flask. And let's see what happens when I open up my tap and add the base from the burette. You can see it's starting to change color there. Okay, and there is our color change complete. So you can see that um, as we add base from our burette to our conical flask containing acid, the color change is red to yellow. And that's with the use of the indicator methyl orange. So when you're describing color change um, for a titration, just always think what's in the conical flask? That's the color it starts in. So um, methyl orange is yellow. Um, in base and red in acid. Um, so we started, if you remember, with um, acid in this conical flask. It started as red because we had acid in the conical flask and then it turned to yellow because we have base in the burette. So you're almost thinking, what's the colour change? Conical flask to burette, acid to base in this case.